Well, today we're looking at Psalm 33. It's a beautiful psalm and does what many psalms do, exhorting us to praise and worship God. It tells of his righteousness, his might and his power. And it talks of his amazing acts of holiness and tells us of his love and how we should put our hope in him. It has glorious poetic lines like he gathers the waters of the sea into jars or that the starry host was made by the breath of his mouth. And we could spend all morning being inspired to praise God by the psalmist's lyrical words. But I'd like us to stop and to dwell on verses four and five. They say this, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. And even within those verses, I'd like to consider those last eight words. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Why is the earth filled with his unfailing love? Well, partly it's because God is love. God is not like love. He's not full of love. He is love. 1 John 4 verse 8 says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Do you know why you and I were made? Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 6 tells us the answer and it's quite mind-blowing. Listen to this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sunset, sonship, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise and glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Did you hear that phrase? In love, he predestined us for adoption. It says that God had us in mind before he created the universe to love us for his pleasure. Let me say that again because it's just so outstanding. God had us in mind before he created the universe so that he could love us for his pleasure. God delights in loving you and me. So in some ways, our first job is not to serve, it's not to do something as we often think. It is that we were made by God to be loved by him. And if we really know what that is, and we really know that that's true, what is our only possible response? Well, you know the answer from Matthew 22. Jesus told us, and it's this, it's to love God and to love others. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, to love your neighbour as yourself. We love because we are made in God's image and he is love. Remember, God tells us he's not loving, he's not full of love, he is love. So let's return to our text in Psalm 33. It says that the Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. And I think this provokes us into thinking about one of the most exciting questions we can ask. What does a world full of God's unfailing love look like? I'd like to just spend a few minutes as a church thinking about what it looks like.
What does a world full of God's unfailing love look like? In the last few years, perhaps like me, you may have despaired that a number of Christians leaders who seem to have lost the basic ability to read the Bible. The Bible is really clear. God taught us what a world full of his love looks like. And he also showed us by his love what a world full of his love looks like. And as an aside for another day, perhaps, he also told us what it doesn't look like. But we'll stay on the positive side this morning. Remember those words from Matthew 23, Matthew 22 rather. They are unambiguous. Love God and love everyone else. Because that's how God's love will be shared across the earth. And for us in Hayward's Heath, how it will be shared in our homes, with our friends, in our places of work. It's through you and me. And when we don't do that, then we can stand in the way of God's love being shared with others. I'm going to mention just five characteristics of a world full of God's love from Jesus' example. Number one, it's a world where we show the compassion of Christ. There are so many verses about Jesus' compassion, so many times when he was moved to heal those who were suffering, when he saw Mary's grief over the death of Lazarus and wept with her, or when he was moved to tears over the city of Jerusalem. But I also love the practical simplicity of the occasions when the crowds were hungry and we're told that Jesus had compassion on them and he fed them. Think of this, the Son of God used his awesome power to produce some bread and fish because people were just hungry. He also had compassion for the embarrassed bride and groom and produced litre after litre of wine for them. Do you know, for me, it's the sort of thing that you could imagine there being rules about. Oh, no, God mustn't use his powers so frivolously. No, quite the contrary. Jesus' compassion reached out into the daily grind of people's lives, in their hurt, in their pain, and he acted. Because unlike sympathy, compassion always results in action. Compassion always results in action. So what is a world like where we show the love of Christ? The earth is full of the unfailing love of Christ when we are compassionate and we do something incredibly simple and give somebody something to eat because they're hungry. Next, it's a world where we show the humility of Christ. In talking about the humility of Christ, we could talk about the incarnation him leaving heaven, or we could talk about him washing the disciples' feet or allowing himself to suffer the terrible treatment he did on the cross. But sometimes we overlook the fact that Jesus' whole life was lived in humility. The way he lived 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Luke 9, 58 says, The foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus' humility wasn't a single grand act. It was his whole life, his whole being. So what's a world like where we show the love of Christ? The earth is full of the unfailing love of Christ when we live in humility in everything that we think, we say and we do. Next, number three, it's a world where we show the kindness of Christ. Perhaps one of the most beautiful examples of Christ's kindness is when he heals the ear that Peter has cut off the man in the garden of the Gethsemane. This was a man who'd come as part of a mob to physically drag Jesus away to torture and to kill him. And Jesus shows extraordinary kindness in healing him when his life was about to be taken away. So what's a world like when we show the love of Christ? The earth is full of the unfailing love of Christ when we show kindness to others who haven't earned it 
and in the opinion of many in society, perhaps don't even deserve it. Next, it's a world where we show the forgiveness of Christ. What a beautiful picture of forgiveness we're given by Jesus on the cross, the perfect Son of God dying in agony on the cross. And he says, Father, forgive them. Surely there can be nothing which better defines the extremities of forgiveness that we are called to. So what's a world like where we show the love of Christ? The earth is full of the unfailing love of Christ when we show unconditional forgiveness to those who don't ask for it and maybe even are harming us as we're forgiving them. Lastly, I want us to think about a world where we show others the dignity of Christ. Jesus lifted up those who were shunned and showed them dignity. We could talk about the woman at the well, whose society said he shouldn't have even been standing with, let alone talking to. He told the disciples to give children an equal place in his company. He touched those who others considered unclean and was constantly using his status to give power and dignity to the powerless. I'd like to talk about, though, the story of Zacchaeus, a despised man who lived on the edges of society, who Jesus honours through his presence in his home and at his table. Here's the thing. In going to the house of Zacchaeus and dignifying him, what happened to Jesus? Yes, he became undignified and lower in the sight of others. Look, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner, they muttered about him. So what's a world like where we show the love of Christ? The earth is full of the unfailing love of Christ when we show dignity to the shunned knowing that we too may become shunned and we consider it a privilege. In churches across the nation we talk and we spend a lot of time talking about what we believe, what's important to us. Let me be a bit controversial because you know we can spend all Sunday and indeed all week talking about what we believe and we also have a habit of telling others what they should believe. But what if what we say we believe stops there in our mouths and in our heads and dare I say even our hearts and never reaches our hands and our feet? What if it never causes us to show Christ's love to the world, to serve others and to show each other's love? as we do it. As many of you know, my daytime ministry, so to speak, is in prison and it can be a tough place. But perhaps controversially, I often say to our volunteers in prison fellowship that the work we do in prisons is the easy bit. And the tricky bit is how we behave towards those we work alongside, those we encounter every day, the way we love each other and show Christ's love. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us that we can do all the amazing spiritual things we like, but if we don't have love, then what we do is worse than worthless. It's a crashing noise. It's worse than doing nothing. It's a distracting noise to God's work. Can you remember what the first sentence is on our church website? It says, a community of people learning to follow Jesus and to share his love and truth with others. To share his love and truth with others. We have the extraordinary privilege of being among the people who've been called by God to make that vision of Psalm 33 a reality. A world full of God's unfailing love. A world where you and I show the compassion of Christ, the humility of Christ, the kindness of Christ, the forgiveness of Christ, and show others the dignity 
they own as images of God, just like this. As I thought about these two short verses in Psalm 33, my prayer is that in all the communities that I'm part of, who are really learning to follow Jesus, that we will be known in the communities that we touch as having the loving characteristics of Christ we've talked about this morning, and that through God's power, we will be part of creating a world that is full of his unfailing love.